Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks and welcome to Inkdependence.com. This is a diplomat box. Inside this box will be a pen, uh, but first we'll start off with the box. Pretty common sort of cardboardy type of box. It has the Inkflower logo on the sides, which I think is a very nice touch, especially this one where it wraps around the edge. That's always a cool look, I think. Inside this box is this box. This is the, uh, the metal sort of casing that many of the higher end diplomats come with. It's a, a sort of silvery box. Very nice, says Lip Diplomat 1922, has the ink flower, very classy. Take this off. You can see this is the bottom of the box. Okay, that metal tang, it's kind of cool. Set that over there. Inside this box is another flap. Again, Diplomat, Ink Flower logo, and the pin on top of a pillow that also sports the Ink Flower logos. That's pretty classy, This little, uh, that Ink Flower. I like it, I've said it before in these videos, I think it's a cool insignia. In, underneath the, uh, the pillow, you find a couple of uh, standard, standard international cartridges along with the, uh, the instruction and like repair or um, uh, warranty book and all that jazz. All right, I'll set this aside. All right, here's the pen. This is a very nice pen. Actually, this is uh, probably, this is certainly the classiest of the Diplomat pens that I have reviewed. I've reviewed several, uh, and this one is the classiest. I've looked at arrows, I've looked at travelers, I've looked at, um, oh shoot, a few others that are not coming to mind at the moment. But this one, man, this one feels sort of luxurious. And the finish on this is actually really wild for a Diplomat pen. We had that orange arrow that came out earlier this year. There was a sparkly green one that came out last year. This is the new uh, fancy looking Diplomat. And as you, uh, well, let's go ahead and bring it up close to the camera. And here it is in all of its glory. It's a little bit tough to capture in pictures, but you can see the lines on there and you can see the reflection here from the uh, very diffuse light I've actually got up here. It's a long bar light, uh, but it's totally diffuse. There aren't, it's not as if though it has, it's not as though it has uh, separate light bulbs in there or anything. This is uh, just the pattern of this pin picking that up. And there we go, that's pretty good. This is a listed as a guilloche pattern. I'm used to guilloche being little crosshatchy type things, but these long, long stripes all the way down the barrel and all the way up the cap, uh, are also a guilloche pattern. This pin, however, does not have a texture. It has multiple layers of lacquer, according to the website, and the lacquer is extremely smooth, very shiny and glossy. It is beautiful. This is a pin that I just keep looking at, a pin that I've been carrying around in my pocket quite a lot over the last several weeks since I got it from my buddy Figboot, who reviewed it first. If you haven't seen that, go check it out over at Figboot's channel. But uh, like him, I'm going to say some glowing things about this pen. Uh, there is not a whole lot of branding on the pen itself. The boxes were rife with it, uh, but the pen itself is very kind of subtle. It says Diplomat engraved here along the cap band since 1922, etc. On the back, simply made in Germany. That is all. Now there are a couple other little bits of branding. There is of course the ink drop here in the clip, which is by the way a nice tight and yet uh, functional clip. This little upswept lip here does definitely help the uh, clip to clip on to whatever it is you're trying to get it on there. Uh, and it's it's quite stiff. It's not going to fall off. Sorry, now you can't see it. It's quite stiff. It's not going to come off once you've got it on there. It's uh, It means business. But also it looks nice. And I think this little ink drop here is very nice as well. On the top, you have the ink flower right there. And it's actually set on a, um, and it's actually in relief. You can see a little bit of texture to it even. Let me bring it up closer. Eh, maybe you can see the texture. Anyway, it's there. And it's on this sort of raised little white disc that's on the finial. This is a very nice looking pen, as I said. I mean, it looks, this is executive level nice. This is boardroom level nice, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then when you open it, it is a slip cap. It has a very nice positive click right there. Uh, when you open this, it has a nice glossy black section. This is a uh, plastic section. It is not particularly, uh, it's not slippery, I don't think. There's actually a little upturned lip here at the uh, at the bottom, which will also help you sort of stop your fingers from slipping. But I've written with this for quite a while and I've had no problems with it slipping. Uh, it's a very comfortable pen to hold. It narrows down quite a bit toward the end uh, here at the bottom. 
and then it's actually fairly wide through the section. The section diameter is between 10.2 down here at the begin at the very um, uh, closest to the nib, and it goes all the way up to 12.2 up here. So that's a two millimeter widening right there, and it's a very comfortable pen. I like a pen with a nice wide section, and this fits that bill. It's also fairly heavy. It is a metal pen, and I'm actually not sure what the metal is. It's not listed on the web page. It feels a little too heavy, perhaps, to be aluminum, but maybe it is. Uh, it could be aluminum and that extra lacquer and whatever it is, uh, the guilloche uh, pattern in there is on. All that could add a little bit of weight, but it's got a fair amount of weight to it. It is not exactly a light pen. Oh, before I close it up, you actually see it is a cartridge converter pen. We saw the cartridges. This is the converter. You can probably not read it. It does say Diplomat on the converter. I do like a branded converter. I think this is just an extra step that's pretty nice. It is a regular old pull-out converter. No, uh, no screw threads or anything on there. But it does seat in nice and deeply. It's very secure. I have had some pens where this is sort of loose, and I've even had a couple where they fall out. Sailor, for example, is notorious for having kind of shite converters, but uh, Diplomat has a nice one. So it is a regular piston converter. It's nothing super fancy, but it is well made, and the... Um, uh, it fits into the section very nicely. Down here, you'll actually see also uh, an O-ring, which is kind of nice. When you close this guy up, it's got several threads, but then when you get this last one, you can definitely feel a little bit of a little bit of resistance to pop free right there as I'm as I'm putting pressure on it. But that's the O-ring work in there, and that keeps it nice and tight. This is not one that's going to un, uh, untwist in your pocket. It's just not going to happen. Um, I would, well, I guess it could theoretically, but I would be shocked, I tell you. Anyway, this, I think, as I keep saying, this is a beautiful pen. All right, so, um, oh, the nib. Let's go ahead and look at the nib. That's always important. The nib is where the business happens. This is a medium stainless steel nib, nothing particularly flashy. The 14 karat gold nibs are absolutely gorgeous. However, they do cost, cost an extra $100. And uh, given how the steel nibs write, I am not gonna be going for a gold nib anytime soon. Uh, a lot of, and actually that 100 bucks sounds exorbitant, but that's just what those gold nibs cost from the, uh, the nib makers. For whatever reason, that gold adds an extra 100 bucks. And that's kind of across the, the board for most pen makers. Uh, you can see the ink flower is engraved in here along with uh, you know, the, the, the name Diplomat and also the since 1922 thing. They really want you to know when it was founded. And the M, which is actually very important. Sometimes you find these nice pens and they don't have a, uh, a nib size engraved on them. And that is irritating if you switch out nibs or whatever. Uh, but this nib is a medium. It writes a little bit on the finer side of medium, I think, especially for a European pen. Not fine you know, for, uh, for a Japanese pen or something, but finer for a European nib. And it's maybe just a little bit on the dry side, but that works out perfectly fine. I've had no problems getting it started, uh, except when I was using... Um, what was it? I had a, the first ink I put in here was actually kind of res, reticent to flow, but uh, this has KWZ Chicago blue in it, and it's been flowing really well uh, since I got the pen, which was in, I don't remember, a couple of months ago anyway. So I've been holding this around for a couple of months. All right. So that's what it looks like. Let's put it up next to a bunch of other pens and see how it uh, stacks up in terms of size and such. Here is my tray of pens. It's going to go kind of right there in the middle. This is a, a range of pens right here. Lots and lots of different sorts of pen. And these two, this is the Diplomat Arrow, which is uh, reminiscent of, um, you know, dirigibles, blimps. This is a great pen. I really like these. In fact, I have two. So there we go. Um, and those fit right there in the middle. They're about the same length. Uh, you can also see it compared to a bunch of other pins here that you may have or you may have seen on the interwebs. Uh, let's see, let's start over here. This is the Pelican M1000, so the big boy of the Pelicans. This is an Omos Malord sized pen, and this is a Franklin Christoph 03. Right here, the Pilot M, uh, sorry, the Pilot 19, uh, Custom 912. Is that what that one's called? If I can finally spit the darn thing out. Then, of course, the two Diplomat pins, the Excellence and the Arrow. The Pilot Custom 74, the uh, Sailor 1911 Large, the Platinum 3776, the 1911 Standard, and the Sailor Pro Gear. Uh, this one is just sort of a medium-sized pen. It's not terribly long. It's about, uh, it's about five and a half inches capped, give or take. So it's uh, several millimeters shorter than, say, these guys over here. It weighs less. It has, is uh, narrow in diameter. Uh, but it is a, a good sized pen, I think, for pretty much everybody. If you have exceptionally small hands, this might not be the pen for you. If you don't like a pen with some weight to it, say you really like the weight of like a Lamy Safari or, I don't know, some of the 
the lighter pilots perhaps or yeah custom 74 these are all going to be lighter these tend to be heavier although the franklin christoph is a little bit of an outlier it's not particularly heavy but uh the metal body pens definitely do add a little bit of weight to it and they're um you know generally a little bit bigger anyway uh so that's what how it lines up there let's go ahead and get set up for a writing sample we'll see how that goes i imagine it's going to go well okay let's see how this guy writes uh here it is again there's the nib this is uh this is actually a piece of paper from an arc notebook from staples he says pretty nice paper on here actually very fountain pen friendly nice to write on let's give this a try we're not testing anything so it's not particularly important but nevertheless i like to tell you so this is a diplomat excellence A. And you can see here there's a little bit of a hard start. That's not really the pin's fault. I have been waving it around for about 15 minutes while I've been making the other part of the video. And uh, so, you know, that's to be expected. I'm not shocked. This is the skyline. And it is a medium nib. There are no problems writing with this guy. It flows very well. Uh, the ink looks nice out of it. I'm a big fan of this ink. It's kind of a like a very dark blue, very navy-ish blue, and uh, it looks really good, especially from this nib, I think. Get a little bit of scribbling action. You can see it drying there on the page. That's actually a nice effect. Look at that. All right. Give us a little line of writing. My bucket is full of eels, as I'm sure yours is. Get some quick squiggles like that. And you can hear it writing pretty, uh, you, you can hear the the, um, the nib on the paper and the echo from this nice wooden desk. This is my roll top desk and it's got a little bit more of an echo because the top is thinner than my general desk. But uh, it, there are no problems with this one, even in like very quick writing. It doesn't uh, have any problems with the feed keeping up. I would be, uh, I'm confident saying that this is a pen that, um, is a good buy. Now, here's the thing about this pen. If we're gonna have anything like a um, like a cons list, it would probably be the price a little bit. Uh, the price here, as you can see, here's a bunch of information about it. Uh, the price here, as you can see, for just the, the Diplomat Excellence A in Skyline Blue with uh, the steel nib is 245 bucks. That is not cheap. That puts it in the realm of pens like uh, Sailor Pro Gears, uh, pins like, uh, this one's cheaper than that, but not by a whole lot, at least full price anyway. Um, and actually this pilot, so uh, two Sailors, the Pro Gear and the 1911 Large, and also the 912, the custom 912, are all in the same kind of range. This is, uh, actually those are all like black and rhodium pens. How about that? Now we got a blue and rhodium that stands out a little bit from the crowd. Um, the 245 price point is a tough price point because it's one of those price points where people go, I don't know. Under 200 bucks, a lot of people in you know in the pin game are like, well, under 200 bucks, okay, cool. Uh, you get over 200 and people go, I don't know. This is a serious like value proposition, and some people will be put off by the fact that it comes at 245 with a steel nib. For me, that's not a problem because I know how well these Diplomat nibs write. I have lots of them. Some of the fine nibs even have a little bit of like, have a little bit of give to them. They're not flex, but they are a little bit soft. This medium does feel pretty, uh, pretty nailish, but I kind of prefer that. I mean, I like the, the sailors and all that kind of stuff with their nail like nibs, but at 245, it's a little bit expensive. So the good folks at Points of Distinction who provided this pen for review, thank you very much, Larry and Hillary, for sending this pen out for review, uh, have been nice enough to give me a, an, uh, a discount offer code, and that offer code is this, INC0910. This will get you 20% off. Anything you want at Points of Distinction, which is my diplomat pen, Com. So go to My Diplomat Pen, check out the, uh, the selection of pens and such that they have there. 
They are all diplomats. There are all kinds of beautiful ones. They have some that are like 50% off. I don't know if this discount code works on those. If it does, I might beat you to it because they have some really cool stuff there, like the balances and those sorts of things, which I'm really drawn to. But that discount code does bring this pin down under 200 bucks, which solves a bit of that price problem. Uh, 20% off of uh, 245 bucks is like $49. So that brings it down to like 190, uh, 190-ish. So I'm not going to do the math. <clears throat> anyway, 190-ish. And that's a, that's a really great price point for this pen. In fact, I might be getting one. Why am I not keeping this one, you might ask? Well, that's because... I'm giving it away. One of you lucky folks can uh, go over to my blog. That is inkdependence.com. And enter to win this very pen. It will be mailed to your house. Uh, enter uh, to win, please. Uh, also, I hate to say it, but... Um, U.S. entries only. I'm only going to ship to U.S. addresses because it will cost me a fortune to ship it out of out of country. Um, so uh, there you go. Anyway, this uh, pin will be given away. I don't get to keep it. I will clean it up. It'll be beautiful when you get it. But uh, definitely go over to inkdependence.com. Enter to win this guy. Go over to my diplomat pin and use your 20% off code ink0917. That code is good for 30 days. That is good. It is that is it is good until nine. 30, 17, that is about 30 days-ish from now. So make sure you go over there and you should do that and that you get your 20% off and that you go to inkdependence.com and that you enter to win. That is all the things I have to say. Check this pin out. It is a really beautiful pin. It is better than it looks in video. Uh, just a joy to use and it's one that I, uh, I really like having in my pocket a lot. So I'm going to be reluctant to give it up, but that's the life of a YouTuber. So there you go. That's all I have to say. See you later. Hey folks, is this video helpful to you to show you a pin that you wanted to buy? Well then check out these videos over here on the left hand side. They'll also be helpful, I hope. If you want to subscribe, hit that subscribe button and let me know uh, that you love the channel. Uh, use that bell icon to get notified when I go live, usually on Fridays. Uh, and also, hey, become a patron. That would be amazing. It'll help this blog keep going. See y'all later. Peace out.